Hey, what's up guys, Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna explore the myth about lactic acid being the cause of muscle burn. We're gonna explore this under three conditions. Condition number one is gonna be aerobic training and we're gonna talk about what goes on there. Condition number two will be sprinting or anaerobic conditioning work. And then condition number three will be constant tension training like split squats. We're gonna talk about what's going on at a muscle physiology level and a biochemistry level to better understand what lactic acid is and what is actually causing muscle burn. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so let's start off with condition number one, which is aerobic training. And this is the easiest one to understand and it'll give us a pretty good idea of how the exercise physiology works. So in this condition, when we're just walking, jogging, and we can basically keep this submaximal or aerobic, what's happening is the glucose that we're using, so if we eat a bagel, and then we break that down into blood sugar or blood glucose, we can actually metabolize nearly all of that glucose in primarily aerobic environments. This means that the oxygen supply meets the oxygen demand, meaning that we have enough oxygen that we're breathing in to keep up pace with the oxygen demand from the exercise. So in this condition, there's not a lot of metabolite buildup, there's not a lot of lactate buildup, and primarily we're using oxidative type one muscle fibers. So those type one muscle fibers are keeping pace with the oxygen demand of the activity. But now let's move into condition number two, which is sprinting or conditioning work. So this is gonna be exercise above the lactate threshold. For most people, that means that they're gonna be above 155, 160 beats per minute, maybe even into the 170s, 180s. So under these conditions, lactate is going to enter the scene. And why is that? Because as we're breaking down glucose, our glucose molecule is gonna split into pyruvate, but we no longer have enough oxygen to actually break down all those pyruvate molecules oxidatively, meaning that some of that pyruvate is not able to be oxidized. And this is where we shift to relying on more anaerobic metabolism. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that lactate is at fault or lactate is causing muscle burn. Lactate just happens to be at the scene of the crime. Let me explain. When we're doing this higher intensity activity and we're burning through a lot of ATP, we're going through a ton of ATP hydrolysis, meaning that we're breaking ATP down into ADP plus phosphate plus hydrogen. And those hydrogen ions are gonna build up in the bloodstream, which is going to lower the pH, make the blood more acidic, and that hydrogen ion buildup is gonna occur. At the same time, we also have pyruvate ions building up because the Krebs cycle is overloaded. We can't oxidize all that pyruvate. So we have hydrogen ions building up and we have pyruvate building up in the bloodstream. What happens if we combine a pyruvate with a hydrogen ion? Well, in that case, we get lactate. Now, importantly, the hydrogen ion buildup is what actually caused the metabolic acidosis and caused that muscle burn. It's not the formation of lactate. In fact, that formation of lactate, the combining of the pyruvate with the hydrogen ions and transporting it out of the bloodstream is actually buffering. So that lactate is buffering hydrogen ions out of the bloodstream, bringing the pH back up to a baseline and making it less acidic. And why does it need to do that? Well, when we're in our type two muscle fiber, for example, it's very glycolytic, meaning that there's not a lot of mitochondria, not a lot of oxygen present. So it's burning through all this ATP and building up all this pyruvate, building up all this, these hydrogen ions, but that's not where the mitochondria is. That's not where the oxygen is. So we need to actually find a way to take those hydrogen ions, take that pyruvate, and move it to where the mitochondria actually is. And that's what lactate's doing. It's taking the hydrogen ion, it's buffering it with the pyruvate, and it's transporting it to somewhere that mitochondria and oxygen is actually present. So where is that? It could be moving it to the type one muscle fibers, it could be moving it to the brain, it could be moving it to the liver for the quarry cycle, which I have a whole video on. It could be moving it to the heart. It could be moving it anywhere that oxygen is present. And again, helping to actually buffer and remove the hydrogen ions so that way you can do more exercise. This process is very beneficial and you need it to happen. If you had lower lactate levels and lactate didn't build up in your bloodstream, you wouldn't be able to run as fast because the hydrogen ion buildup would just go unregulated and you wouldn't be transporting that pyruvate to somewhere it could be oxidized. That would be not good, not beneficial, and lactate is actually helping you run faster. So again, to reiterate, lactate is just present at the scene of the crime, the metabolic acidosis was already occurring, and then lactate swooped in to buffer those hydrogen ions out and save the day. So a quick round of applause for lactate, it's doing a good thing for your muscles. 
And one question you may have is what about lactic acid versus lactate? And I actually have a whole another video that goes into the biochemistry of this a little bit more in detail. So we're not gonna explain that here. This is more the practical takeaways, but you can check that one out. I'll put it at the end of the video in the description below. All right, so one other important condition that we wanna explore is resistance training. So something like constant tension split squats or blood flow restriction training, where we're building up metabolites and limiting blood flow. And that's another scenario where lactate is present, but not necessarily at fault. All right, so in the case of split squats, for example, we're gonna be putting the quads and the glutes and other muscles involved in the split squat on constant tension throughout the movement, meaning that we're going to be contracting the muscle to a certain extent throughout the entire movement, whereas in normal cases when we're doing like full range of motion exercises, there's some brief period of tension and some brief period where we're letting go of that tension. So in constant tension exercises, there's really not that time for letting go of the tension and allowing blood flow. So around 30% of maximal muscle tension, we get significant peripheral occlusion of blood flow. Meaning that when we tense our muscles up to about 30% of maximum and we maintain that throughout the repetition, we're gonna occlude the normal flow of blood through the muscle and therefore occlude the oxygenation of the muscle while we're doing that exercise. And this is why we get a really significant burn during leg extensions and split squats and exercises like that. In this case, as we're going through the set, doing more and more reps, the blood is becoming increasingly hypoxic and we get a similar situation where we can have lactate and metabolite buildup during the set. And the longer the time under tension, the more of that metabolite buildup that occurs. In this case, as we're working, type two muscle fibers particularly, we are going to be building up lactate. We're gonna be building up metabolites. But again, in this case, it's because we're also gonna be breaking down ATP into ADP, building up hydrogen ions, and that lactate is gonna form secondarily to help that process. Now this form of constant tension training can be beneficial under certain conditions, such as rehab settings where you can't load quite as heavily or in certain phases of training. And I actually have an article on this on themovementsystem.com, which you can check out. But it is important to understand that this is a trade-off and that as we do more and more metabolite buildup and constant tension, we typically have to reduce the mechanical tension aspect of training. So as you can see, it is a bit of a trade-off. So some points to take away is that hydrogen ion buildup is coming from that ATP breakdown and lactate is actually helping to buffer those hydrogen ions out under the conditions of anaerobic training like sprinting as well as anaerobic training like resistance training with constant tension. Also, I wanna mention that lactate is not involved in muscle soreness. That's actually from micro trauma at the muscle level and the repair that's going on there. Lactate and metabolite buildup in training may indirectly relate to hypertrophy by some mechanisms with hormones and whatnot, but lactate is not present days after training and causing muscle soreness. All right, so hopefully that helped you clear up some myths about lactate. If you wanna check out more, check out my video about lactate versus lactic acid or the quarry cycle to learn a little bit more about it. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.